morning. How are you today? Better than yesterday. Look at the person next to you. Tapos, bati mo naman. Happy Sunday. Sabi mo sa kanya, our Lord is everything. Amen. Are you familiar with this man? His name is uh, Jaime Lachica Singh. He was the 30th Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila and was also a cardinal. No? And uh, he was popularly known as Cardinal Sin. When I was young, no? when I was young, nung bata pa ako, hindi ko makomprehend bakit yung ating Archbishop, ang pangalan niya, Cardinal Sin. No? So, how ironic kasi Cardinal and then ang apelido niya, Sin. Diba? Pero this man is so famous uh, uh, during the 80s because of the Edsa Revolution. Remember that? Uh, growing up as a young Catholic boy, we were scheduled every Friday No, every Friday afternoon to see our chaplain for a confession. And uh, sa totoo lang, I'll be honest, during those times, eh, I find it awkward. Kasi I was like, what, 11, 12, 12 years old? And uh, as we all know, this is the uh, puberty stage or tinatawag na awkward stage. And uh, we don't want to talk to people, especially in a closed door. And especially to an older person, lalo na kung kapwa mo lalaki. So, I find it awkward and uh, and usually, sometimes, I'm confused because there are times I can't remember any sin I committed. So, for the priest not to get upset or to get angry, I will just verbalize a sin that I just made up. So, my time will hit with him will quickly pass. And I realized... I just committed a sin for lying. <laughs> right? No, wala na ako maisip eh. Kasi naubos na. Naubos na yung ginawa kong kasalanan. Hindi naman ako pwede mag-commit na kasalanan para may, kwe- may kwento ko next Friday. The thing is, nagagawa-gawa na lang ako ng kwento. Pero, na-realize ko, I was, ano, I committed a sin for lying. You know what? There's so much confusion in our world on the topic of sin. Right? And in fact, sin is the most hated topic in a sermon sa church. Ayaw natin pag-uusapan yan. People use the term synonymously with an error in judgment. No, sometimes, uh, uh, kinakategorize natin yung sin as, nako, error in judgment, sin na yan. Or personal shortcomings, sin na yan. Or failure, nako, you're sinning because you're failing. Or you made a mistake. It's already a sin. You see, sin is not necessarily synonymous to these uh, words, but in fact, probably they're relevant, but not necessarily synonymous. For this afternoon, uh, for this morning, sabi mo sa katabi mo, let's talk about sin. <laughs> not our sins. <laughs> Don't talk about your sins. <laughs> In Romans 6, 12, 14, it was read a while ago by Sister Gurley, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its desires. When you talk about reigning, no, you're giving the throne. You're allowing him to be the king or queen of your life. So, Paul reminded the Romans not to give the throne to sin, because it will dictate it will manipulate you no? in, uh, in doing all uh, in, in wrongdoings. And do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God. And all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you because you are not under law, but under grace. This is the most beautiful sentence. You are not under law anymore. You are under grace. Right? Ang tanong sa umaga na to, what is a sin? I used to uh, work 
sa Jollibee as a store manager like what 20 years ago and uh, I used to handle a store in uh, if you're familiar with uh, Recto the Divisoria area if you're if you're familiar with Isitan Recto are you familiar with that mall sa Recto I used to be the store manager of Jollibee there and uh, I used to have like what 100 150 in a store all all my crew and staff so as a Christian, I asked them, and they have nothing. Uh, kung bago wala naman silang choice, dahil ako yung boss nila, they attend my Bible study. I conducted PDL or Purpose Driven Life, the Rick Warren, and, and uh, a nightly Q&A to just satisfy their hunger and thirst in the Word. And uh, one night, uh, during our Bible study, I asked them, what is a sin? And there was this young man, confidently answered me, Sir, it's assault. <laughs> and ito, <laughs> nalito ako dun eh. Sabi ko, ha, no? <laughs> anyway, it's not assault. You know, we have been called to be holy, right? Because our God is holy. In fact, the Bible said, no, be holy because I am holy. First Peter 1.16 and even us, you know, it's nice to uh, look at where we stand as a denomination, as a church of the Nazarene. I looked at our articles, articles of faith, and I found out that uh, in section 5, it, talk, it talks about the sin, the original, and the personal. Let me read this for you. We believe these are articles of faith, our tenets of faith. This is something that we believe at. As a Nazarene, we believe that sin came into the world through the disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve, no? and death by sin. We believe that sin is of two kinds, original sin or depravity and actual or personal sin. 5.1, we believe that original sin or depravity or depravity is that, is that corruption of the nature of all the offspring of Adam by reason of which everyone is very far gone from original righteousness or the pure state of our first parents and the time of their creation is averse to God, is without spiritual life and inclined to evil and that continually. We further believe that original sin continues to exist with the new life of the regenerate until the heart is fully cleansed by the baptism with the Holy Spirit. 5.2. We believe that original sin differs from actual sin in that it constitutes an inherited propensity to actual sin for which no one is accountable until its divinely provided remedy is neglected or rejected. 5.3. We believe that actual or personal sin is a voluntary violation of a known law of God by a morally responsible person. It is therefore not to be confused with involuntary and inescapable shortcomings, infirmities, faults, mistakes, failures, or other deviations from a standard of perfect conduct that are residual effects of the, of the fall. However, such innocent effects do not include attitudes or responses contrary to the Spirit of Christ, which may properly be called sins of the Spirit. We believe that personal sin is primarily and essentially a violation of the law of love, and that in relation to Christ, sin may be defined as unbelief. We know that sin is willful and voluntary transgression of God's known law. No? Uh, Kung baga, uh, kung babasahin mo yung articles of faith natin mismo, no, dinefine niya na anong ibig sabihin ng sin. Ang challenge dito is for us to explain it further in our own words na mas maiintindihan natin. Yun yung challenge kapag ka nagtanda ka ng ano yung membership class. Yun yung challenge ni Brother Ravik. Pag nakakandak ng membership class. 
Now, you have to explain the articles of faith no? in a manner na mas maiintindihan ng mga, kumbaga, ng simpleng nag attend ng ating simbahan. So, umaga na ito, eh, subukan natin gawin yon. Alam naman natin na ang kasalanan ay willful daw or voluntary transgression. Ibig sabihin, intentional. No? Intentional na if violate mo yung law ng Diyos. Dito pa lang, medyo ano yun eh. Medyo, uh, what do you call this? Controversial na. Kasi walang tao na aamin na intentional gusto niyang magkasala. Right? But in fact, sin is being defined as a willful and voluntary transgression. Naku eh, para itong ano, gusto kong bumait, pero di ko magawa. Alam niyo yung song na yun? <laughs> Alam niyo, do you know that seven deadly sins? The familiar, the famous seven deadly sins are not actually in the Bible. Well, let me clarify. The sins enumerated, you can find it in the Bible. But the listings of seven deadly sins, it's not in the Bible. No? In fact, the problem with teaching the uh, uh, the problem with uh, teaching yung seven deadly sins only, nagko concentrate ka lang doon sa seven. The truth is, sabi ng Biblia, all sins are deadly. Binanggit kanina yon for the wages of sin is death. Buti na lang, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, sin, let's just, let's just clarify things. Sin was not created by God. Okay? In fact, sin was not even created by the first human beings. Huh? Yes. Hindi galing to kay Adam at kay Eve. They committed the sin, pero hindi galing sa kanila. Alam niyo kung kanino nagsimula ang sin? Kay paring taning. Siya yung unang-unang nakaisip at gumamit ng free will niya doon papunta sa dark side. He tried to manipulate the first couple no, and convince them na pwedeng mangyari to. You can also be like, you know, like him. No, you can override things. You can also have the power. Just disobey him. Kasi pantay lang kayo eh. That's the problem with uh, yung pag-disobey mo sa authority. It will lead you to sin. Again, sin was not created by God. In fact, sin is a perversion or twisting of God's perfect creation. Last week, we talked about God's perfect creation. No, when Ang ganda kasi ng plano eh. Ang ganda ng intention ng mapagmahal na Diyos. The problem is, we messed up kasi because of our perversion. Gusto natin i-twist yung arm ng Lord. In fact, hindi naman bago yan hanggang ngayon. Even, pansin niyo habang tayo nananalangin, even if we pray, sometimes we thought that we are just asking God a favor. But di natin napapansin, we're twisting His arm. Lord, if you will give this to me, I will do this. Eh, paano pag hindi binigay sa'yo, hindi mo nagagawin? Right? Or, Lord, kaya lang naman ako nagkaganito kasi hindi mo ako pinapansin. You don't give me favors. So, if you don't do this, Lord, papipilitan akong gawin ito. So, you're twisting the arm of God. The question is, kung hindi biblical, ang seven deadly sins, what are the sins listed in the Bible? Here's the truth. There are lots of sins that no, can be found no, na pwede matagpuan sa Biblia. No, bigyan ko kayo ng sample, but not all. Kasi ang dami. No? Try nyo i-Google. Ang dami. No? Ano yung sinabi ni Paul sa mga taga-Corinth? Sabi niya, Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. 
No sexually immoral, immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or males who have sex with males. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. Well, familiar na ako sa lahat ng yan, pero yung nabasa ko yung verbally abusive people will not inherit the kingdom of God. My goodness, madami hindi pupunta sa langit dahil ang daming basher sa Facebook at sa YouTube. <laughs> Dati kasi iniisip lang ng mga tao yun eh. Pag napapanood nila yung artista, iniisip nila, binabash nila sa utak nila. Ngayon, no, na, na ilalagay na nila online. Lahat ng masasamang iniisip nila, makasabi lang ng masama. No, sa kapwa tao, sa politician, sa kapwa kung sino man. Try to read your 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 Facebook feed. You see a lot of people who talks who talks nasty about other people. No. How about sinabi ni Mark? For from within, out of people's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, thefts, murders, adulteries, greed, evil actions, deceit self-indulgence or pagiging makasarili, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile a person. Sabi ni Paul, sabi ni Mark, balik tayo kay Paul. O si Paul ba talaga sumulat? Ah, tama, yeah. sa si Paul. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness, they are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanders, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrusty, unloving, and unmerciful. Sabi ni Paul ulit sa Galatians, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, uh, selfish ambitions, dissensions or pagkakahiwahiwalay, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything familiar, similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Sabi ni Timothy, But know this, hard times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, Without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. Disclaimer lang po, it was Paul, Mark, and Timothy nagsulat nun, hindi ako ha? Kaya wag niyo akong i-bash sa Facebook. <laughs> It wasn't me. It was the word of God. The problem is, a lot of people, in fact, a lot of pastors, they don't want to talk about sin. Kasi ayaw nila mabash. But here's the good news. If you felt something, no, not only you who are here in the church, but you who are watching on YouTube or Facebook, if you felt something, na parang nasaktan ka, no? Good news yan. If you felt something na parang na-convict ka and you feel like you don't wanna do it, oh, nagkasala ako kasi binanggit. Sakto, yan yung pagkakamali ko. If you felt something like that, mas good news yan. Teka, pastor, eh, na-convict, good news. Nasaktan, good news. Paano nangyari yun? You know why? Kasi hindi pa kalos ang heart mo. Ang nakakatakot, Habang binabasa ko yun kanina, wala ka nararamdaman. Iyon ang nakakatakot. 
kasi nagsisimula ng magkalyo ang puso mo. Kasi mahirap mag-work ang Holy Spirit kapag ka hindi natin inopen ang puso natin. Ang tao nagkakaroon ng pagbabago dahil nagsisimula sa puso. Dahil ang kalyo kinukudkod ng Holy Spirit para numipis at maramdaman mo yung pain. You know, do you know that pain is good? When you felt something, no? Sakit ang ulo mo, that's good. It means na, may remind ka ng katawan mo that there's something wrong. You know that yung lagnat, fever, is not actually a sickness. It's a reminder. It's a signal. When you were, uh, pag na-prick ka ng something, when you touch something that is hot or cold, no, it, yung, 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 yung whatever you felt, it transmit to your brain na sinasabing, oops, wag mong hawakan yan, mainit. Oops, wag mong hawakan yan, malamig. No, sometimes ayaw natin ng ganun. We don't want to feel the pain. We don't want to feel the, the heat, the coldness. But actually, it's good because it reminds you to stay away from those things. The problem is, if you don't feel anything, just like the lepers, right? Di nila napapansin, nalaglag na pala yung tenga nila. Di nila napapansin, nalalaglag na pala isang daliri nila. Kasi they don't feel anything. Kaya ng frostbite. No? Di mo alam, wala ka ng ilong dahil sa frostbite. <laughs> Good thing, wala naman talaga tayong ilong. <laughs> you see, sometimes, people would rather listen to the minister of the gospel who focus on encouragements. There's nothing wrong with that. Focus on those uh, ministers who focus on living a good life. Your best life now. Preachers that talks about being prospered, being healed. There's nothing wrong about that. Being favored. No? But sometimes, or most of the times, people love to hear teachers, preachers, who will talk about whatever things that can satisfy the each on their ears. There's nothing wrong with those topics. In fact, you can really find them in the Bible. But focusing only on a small portion of the word will turn our listeners into unhealthy believers and fly-by-night Christians. They will remain hungry and thirsty for the real bread of life. That's why we, you know, we take pride with the Lord. We boast of the Lord. As ministers here in Church of the Nazareth, you can check the playlist of our uh, uh, preachings. You, it, it, it's, it is something that you can, well, we try to tackle everything in the Bible. In fact, we have walked through the Bible every, every Wednesday. Impossible hindi tamaan yung Genesis to Revelations. Now, in fact, if you will look at our playlist, no, it jumps from, uh, from, from Old Testament to New Testament, New Testament to Old Testament. We try to explain everything to our people because that is supposed to be our role as earthly shepherds. You see, one of the most popular sermon topics, no, actually, one of the most unpopular, sorry, sermon topics, is about sin. And the sad thing is, whenever we hear sermons about sin, mostly the focus would be the volitional sin. No, kasi dalawang klase yan, original at personal. Ang nangyayari, nakafocus lang doon sa pinag- yung mga kasalanan natin. And sometimes, the highlights would be the guilt trip towards the listener. No? In fact, I know some people used to, be, used to attend my church before na hindi na bumalik. Da, pinatanong ko, bakit hindi na bumalik yun? Kasi daw, pinatatamaan ko sa pulpito. <laughs> Pero masaya pa rin ako. Alam niyo bakit? Kasi nasaktan eh. Diba sabi ko nga, pag nasaktan o na-convict, good news yan. But here's the thing. Let me clarify things. Hindi kami magpupuyat ng Sabado ng gabi para mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos to single you out. Right? In fact, I do, I do my sermon every Tuesday. Tatatapos ko siya every Thursday. No? Aaraling ko siya ng todo-todo Sabado ng gabi na para kabisado ko. At hindi ko gagawin yun to single out one person. Hindi ka ganun kahalaga sa akin. Joke lang. Mahalaga ka sa akin. 
Pero sa totoo lang, hindi yun yung focus ng sermon. You need to understand na kapag ang sermon narinig natin, ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, this is for rebuking, for teaching, no? for for us to be guided, for us to be encouraged, halo-halo yan. Huwag natin batuhin yung messenger, no? pakinggan natin yung message ng Panginoon. The reason why, naging born again Christian ka, kasi you listen to the, to the message of God. It's very important for us preachers no, to strike the balance of sharing how the sin started. Why did we come to this point? No, why do we commit sins? And what is the perfect solution to eradicate sins? Dapat siya nasasagot no, ng preacher, nasasagot ng pastor. Our parishioners, kayo, na pinagsisilbihan namin, must be able to see the journey from slavery to freedom which results in sanctification. Amen? See, there are two types of sin. One is original, one is crispy. Ay, kayo si yun. <laughs> one is original, original sin, and number two is personal sin or actual sin. The first is the original sin. No, let's consider it as a noun. No, kasi isa verb. Eh. No, the first original sin. No which refers to the corrupt nature of the entire human race. Wala kang kinalaman dyan. Doon sa pangalawa, may kinalaman ka. Dito, wala kang kinalaman. Ito ay desisyon ng mga naunan tao sa atin. Tinamaan ka lang. Parang pinamaan na sa'yo. Wala ka namang kinalaman doon sa negosyo ng tatay mo, pero since mayaman siya at siya ipapanaw na, sa last will niya, pinamana niya sa iyo lahat ng negosyo niya. No? You inherited all his businesses. Kaya nga natutuwa ako doon sa mga kaibigan ko eh. Na namatay yung mga magulang nila, abay pinamana. Biro nyo, pabrika. Diba? Pinamana, ospital. Pinamana, skwelahan. Pinamana, malalaking negosyo. Kaya nung ko yung tatay ko, ano ba papamana mo sa akin? Sabi niya, meron diabetes, hypertension. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Pwedeng maganda, pwedeng hindi. Minamana. Right? Mana pa rin. Ganun din yung sin eh. Yung original sin, we inherited, we inherited it from, our, from the first couples, from our first parents. We can trace the origin, the, the origin of, of sin all the way back to the fall of man when Adam and Eve willfully went against what God told them not to do. No? God told them not to eat from a certain tree in the garden, which is in fact, hindi apple. Dahil nakalagay lang sa Bible, fruit lang. Hindi talaga siya apple. Kawawa naman yung apple no? na, na identify sa sin. Di ba? <laughs> uh, and yun yung exact ang ginawa nila. Minsan, ng tao, may kakulitan din, ano? Kapag kasi sinabi mong huwag yun ang gagawin. Right? Naalala ko yung anak kong lalaki, sabi ko sa kanya, do not, okay? do not uh, get this fork and insert it in the wall socket. You will be electrocuted. No? After I said that, he get the fork. And he's curiously want to try it. Sabi ko, sige, isundot mo yan, babaliktad ka dyan, at bubula ang bibig mo. The thing is, the reason for warning is for us to be protected. No? We look at authorities, government, parents, God as killjoys. When you started looking at authorities in that manner, no? yun na, nagsisimula na. Ang kasalanan. Now, in fact, the original sin, yung doctrine na to, the doctrine of original sin is what caused David to write. Remember King David, na namatay yung anak niya? Yung anak nila ni Bathsheba, kinuha ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, surely, I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. In-acknowledge niya yung original sin. 
Pero meron din siyang ginawang personal sin. Di ba? He committed adultery and he committed murder. He killed Uriah, the former husband of Bathsheba. The second type of sin is what we refer to as no, na personal sin or actual sin. No? Yung isa, original sin noun, ito naman verb, action word, kasi ginagawa. Personal sin is the voluntary violation of a known law of God by a morally responsible person. Ulitin ko lang, voluntary violation. One of the most beautiful gifts given to us by God is free will, right? Use it beautifully, it will result to righteousness, right? It will result to holiness. No? Lipat ka sa dark side of free will, it will result to what? Sin. Disobedience. When it comes to personal sin, those sins we have all committed, we are, on, <laughs> we are all in the same boat. Pansin niyo yung picture, tuwan-tuwa yung dalawa, sabi nila, oh, sure, glad, the whole is at our end. Eh, lulubog din sila. Kasama sila. Hindi tayo pwede magmalinis na sabihin natin na tayo lang, na simbahan na to, yung ibang simbahan, mga makasalanan sila. The people outside this, yung four walls of this church, they are all sinners, except for these people who are here. That is not true. There is this, uh, there is this so-called corporate sin. Ibig sabihin ng corporate sin, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone. Bad news, including Mama Mary. Ooh, don't go there, Pastor. Yeah, that's true. Including her. That's why it's not worthy worshiping her. I love her. I mean, what I mean is, I adore her. In fact, Mary was one of the biblical characters I emulate. Kasi di, hindi ko malilimutan, there was this one teaching that really captured my heart. And it's about Mary. When she said, Be it unto me, Lord, according to your word, according to your promises, be it unto me. Batang bata yun. So bold, no? So cooperative sa, sa, sa plan ng Panginoon. And I admire her for that. But that's all. Never I will worship her because she's not worthy of worshiping. She's the mother of God, but she is not co-creator. Let's just, be, let's just clarify. Kasi yun sinasabi natin na corporate sins. We cannot look at people na parang they are more higher to us, especially those people na namatay na, and we will try to elevate them. Now, minsan, mas madalas tayo manalangin sa kanila kaysa sa Panginoon. That is wrong, and that is sin. In fact, nations are suffering because of this kind of sin. And it is most popularly known as idolatry, Right? May nagbiro nga sa akin, kaya daw hindi nawawala yung traffic sa EDSA. Eh, magtayo ko ba naman ng kalaki-laking rebulto doon? Hindi pa kagandahan. Right? Biro lang naman yun. Ewan ko, totoo. Maari. Original sin reveals an inherited ten- tendency toward personal sin. Anong ibig sabihin? Yung original sin na ginawa ni Adam at saka ni Eve, no? ito ang nagbigay ng lisensya for people to commit personal sins. There are two kinds of personal sins. First, the sins of commission. Anong ibig sabihin nito? You committed the sin. As simple as that. What do we do? What we do? No, what we do that we shouldn't. Okay? Ito yung mga ginagawa natin na hindi dapat natin ginagawa. Ano naman yung uh, sins of omission? What we didn't do, we should have. Ano ibig sabihin? Supposedly, ginawa mo, hindi mo namang ginagawa. Okay, ang, ang familiar tayo is this, the sin of commission. Ito, malinaw na to, Wala na to masyadong debate. Kahit kanino. 
Oh, ginawa mo yan? It's a sin. Pero dito, madami pang debate. Wala naman ako dyan kinalaman eh. Naalala niyo yung, yung priest, yung Levite? Nakita nila yung Samaritan? Ay, nakita nila yung, yung, yung helpless na tao? And then they just pass by? That is sins of commission. omission. Pwede mong gawin, no? Pero hindi mo ginawa. Pwede kang tumulong, pero hindi mo ginawa. Here's the thing. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you are responsible for what you know. That's the truth. Kaya minsan, di ba, sinasabi natin, naku, ayoko na malaman yan, magiging responsable pa ako dyan. <laughs> ayoko na madinig yan. Di ba? I'm choosing my battles. <laughs> Kasi sa totoo lang, you know, you, you, that's, yun yun eh. You are responsible for what you know. Di ba? Minsan, pag nagdadrive ka sa freeway, and then you saw these helpless people na nasiraan sa daan, there's this parang, <laughs> tulungan ko kaya yun. Kasi responsable na ako, nakita ko eh. Right? Or you see some accidents, ano, tatawag ka na 911 para i-report yung accident. Kasi you are responsible for what you know. Wala kang kinalaman doon, you didn't commit the sin, pero you are responsible for what you know. That's why you are responsible in lovingly rebuking the person next to you. If you really love the person, rebuke him, rebuke her in love. The Bible says, open rebuke is better than hidden love. Alam mo, ang totoo mong kaibigan, hindi yung magsasabing, go girl! Ang ganda-ganda mo ngayon, girl! Hindi yun, totoo mong kaibigan. Ang totoo mong kaibigan, yung magsasabi sa'yo, Wag mong gawin yan, sister. Hindi yan kaanyayaya sa Diyos. And I don't care kung magalit ka sa akin o hindi. Basta ako mahal kita, sinabi ko yung tama, sinabi ko yung totoo, and it's up to you. It's your choice. Use your free will. Right? Ang hirap naman. Ang hirap naman pala maging responsible sa nalalaman ko. In James 4.17 points out, anyone then who knows the good, he, he ought to do and doesn't do it, nagkakasala. No? Sabi ni Santiago sa Tagalog, ang nakakaalam na dapat niyang gawin, ang mabuti, ngunit hindi yun ang ginawa niya, ay nagkakasala. Ang linaw, di ba? So ngayon, pag alam mong mali, hindi mo ginawa, hindi mo tinama, nagkakasala ka. Ha? Huh? Part din pala ng sins yun. Kaya ayaw na ayaw ko itong pag-uusapan, pastor, eh. itong kasalanan, kasi nabubuking. Nakikita ng Diyos tuloy na ma-magnify, na-highlight yung kasalanan ko. Good news uli yun. Ma-highlight yung kasalanan natin. Bakit? Kasi may pagkakataon na magbago. Amen? What are the consequences of sin? As we end, individually, institutionally, socially. There is a saying that you can count the seed from an apple, but you cannot count the apples from a seed. Right? The consequences of sin, parang sa apple. No? There are too many to count. Nagsimula lang sa disobedience ng dalawa, Romolio ng Romolio hanggang 2020. That is why the Lord's will, for, uh, the Lord's will be for us is to live a holy life no? away from sinfulness. Individually, it led us all to spiritual and physical death. Continues beyond this life to eternity. We spread. Uh, we were spread, separated. Spread, but that's what I Spread. We were separated from God and led us to a kind of alienation. No, para naging alien na tayo sa panginoon. Na alienate tayo. Parang lumayo na. We experience spiritual blindness, and our hearts become hardened tumigas na, nagkakali na, rebelliousness arose in people, especially towards God. This rebelliousness involves active aggressions against God or transgression against God's will. Not only to God, but we also rebel to one another. We rebel to government, we rebel against our parents. Sin affects individuals by separating them from God and bringing dissatisfaction and guilt into their lives. Yung dala-dala ng kasalanan. How about 
institutionally. Sabi ng Proverbs 16, 18, Pride comes just before destruction and a haughty spirit happened just before a fall. Kagaya rin, individually, so is the nation. God is no respecter of persons or size. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, para sa Lord, sin is sin. Alam nyo, America is losing its blessing and worldwide influence because of we have grown more and more corrupt and sinful. We have kicked God out of public square. We have kicked God out of marriage. In fact, we created a new form of marriage. We have kicked God out of the public schools. We have kicked God out of the government. We have kicked God out of business, and we have kicked God out of our homes. And then we, when, when tragedy strikes, people say, where was God? And di ba natin naalala? We already kicked Him out. Nation after nation, history will tell us, nation after nation that became morally bankrupt has fallen. Matuto tayo, tayo sa, matuto tayo sa Israel. Matuto tayo sa Roman Empire. Sa, sa Egypt. Sa, sa Egypt. Kalaki-laki noon. Lahat sila bumagsak. Time and time again. Lahat ng nation na naging corrupt, naging sinful, bagsak. In fact, in nation natin, bakit siya bagsak? Kasi sinful tayo. Oh, don't go there. Remember, we're 80% Catholic. We are the only Catholic nation in Asia. It doesn't mean you're Catholic you're not sinful. Amen? I'm sorry to say that. You need to be a believer. You need to be a Christian. You need to be a follower of Christ. No? It doesn't mean that you are a follower of Christ, you're not sinful. But at least you are in a process. Right? The consequences of national sin are that God removes His blessing and when He does, the nation implodes due to the heavy weight of immorality. Sin led to an indifference to God and His will in the form of passive aggression. Dapat matuto po tayo sa 2 Chronicles 7.14. Ang ganda ng sinulat dito eh. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Gusto natin umunlad? Gusto natin ang mapayapang buhay? Let us consider this as a nation, lalo na sa ating beloved Philippines. The Lord will heal our nation if we will, we will stop pretending to be Christians and start acting to be Christians. Right? How about socially? We are all considered guilty of sin in one way or another. Alam naman natin yun, the guilt we have changed our status before God. The disobedience of the first couple led to a number of specific curses against humanity. We are led to alienation from God, from, one, for our, from our one true self, and alienation from others. We are in bandage to sin, and slaves to it. Sin explains such things as genocide, war, cruelty, exploitation, and abuse. Society today has embarked on creating weapons of mass destruction to control a section of people. The manufacture of biological and chemical weapons causes diseases, hatred, among people. No? We look at people based on the color of skin or based on their accents. Accidents, poverty, environmental pollution, family conflicts, calamities, and others too many to mention were caused by social scenes. Here's the good news. Let me end with this. Ano good news po? The good news is, Jesus 
came to save us from our sin. And God's goal for us is to live without sin. Is that possible? Yes, that's possible. If we will trust the Holy Spirit, that's very possible. Sin of any type is contrary to the will of God for our lives. In fact, it may surprise you to know His will for us is just the opposite. Ang gusto lang ng Panginoon, no, sa simpleng illustration na to, from wages, no, the wages of sin is death. Nandun ka sa kabila. It would be hard for you to go no, to the other side, to cross over where God, kasi before magkasama yan eh, humankind at ang Panginoon. Naglalakad sila sa garden in perfect harmony, perfect fellowship. Pero nagkaroon ng barrier because of sin. And the Lord gave up His life no, for our sins to be redeemed. We have been called to be holy. In fact, God said, be holy because I am holy. Well, that's, a quite, uh, that's quite a challenge, Pastor. Mahirap yan. Mahirap yan, bossing. Tao lang po. May maririnig mo yan sa mga kasama. Ako, bossing, mahirap yan. Pinagsasabi mo yan. Tao lang po, marupok, nagkakamali. Di ba? All these things are true. Mahirap talaga yan. Tao lang tayo. We are in a corruptible body. Yes, marupok tayo, nagkakamali tayo. That's why you don't rely on your own strength. Amen? You rely on the strength of God. That's why you need a Savior. Kasi kung kaya mo lang din, eh ba't kailangan mo pa ng Savior? Right? You need a Lord to follow, to direct you, to guide you, and you need a Savior to save you. That's why a call from God Himself for you and me for this morning to be holy. No? Bakit? Sabi niya, be holy because I am holy. Siyempre, kung gagawa ka, gagawa ka na rin ng isang bagay, yung creation mo, gusto mo, kamukha mo na. Hindi ka gagawa ng isang bagay na ikaiinis mo. Gagawa ka ng isang bagay o isang tao na mamahalin mo. At you want to be fellowship with this human being. You have been liberated from sin, which results in satisfaction. No? There's a new word for F word, and that is freedom. Right? Sabi, sabi ni Pablo, but now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification, and the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the good news is, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. A call from God himself for you and me, be holy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord, to learn from you today, rebuking our hearts, highlighting the sins of our hearts, Lord God. Lord, it is possible na hindi nakikita ng iba yung kasalanan namin. Hindi alam ng marami, pero ikaw, walang maitatago sa'yo. Batid mo ang laman ng aming puso, Panginoon. At nandito kami sa umaga na ito. Sampu ng mga workers na namin, namin na nandito sa chapel na to at uh, sa lahat ng nanonood at nakikinig sa amin sa social media. We just want to come to you, Lord God. Acknowledge you first that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our Savior and you are the reason that we will have an eternal life. Sabi mo, Panginoon, for the wages of sin is death. Pero ang good news, ikaw, Panginoon, ang sagot. And with that, Lord God, we just want to ask for forgiveness. Lord, we repent of our sins. If there's any particular sin in your heart that you know of, if there's anything that uh, was mentioned a while ago that somehow pricked your heart, and the Holy Spirit is asking you, 
to repent it to God, this is your opportunity. This is your divine appointed time. Lord, forgive our sins. Particularly, tell it to, tell it to God. Tell it to God now. Tell it to God. He hears you. He hears your heart. Yes, Lord. Listen to your people, Lord. Listen to them. Forgive us, Lord God. We all sinned, Lord God. We're not righteous. Thank you, Jesus. We ask, you, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. We repent of our sins. And we believe that Jesus died for us. We accept you, Lord God. We accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. And from now on, Lord God, we will live a life that is holy because you are holy. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the